Hey YouTube uh, DIYers, uh, so I'm here with my battery packs and uh, they're all completed. Got some of the wiring done. Uh, I'm just gonna go over how this works and uh, maybe you guys can have get some ideas from that or maybe you have some ideas for me. Um, so what I got here is uh, three BYD. Uh, originally they were like 5.5 kilowatt packs. Uh, they've been used and uh, for a lot of people say heavily used so i'm expecting maybe three and a half and uh, maybe with the balancers i got maybe i can get four kilowatts out of each pack but uh, we'll be doing some load testing later on with them so what i installed on them are these chargery 8t uh, bms's and then i also put some uh, five eight amp um, uh, balancers in their active balancers and hopefully uh, there'll be enough current between the cells with the, the charger unit and those that um, I'll get the max uh, capacity out of all these cells uh, in the middle here I got my charger it's a 22 amp charger for lipo 4 and um, I'm gonna be using that uh, as a backup of it'll be hooked up to a 2000 watt inverter generator and uh, that'll charge the battery and outages and stuff like that for kind of light use. Uh, other than that, I'll be charging these up with solar and uh, also the inverter is a uh, charger. Um, so I went with the Sigonier 6 kil kilowatt split phase inverter and it'll be feeding the sub panel there and um, providing backup power and uh, I can probably charge my car off of that. I uh, got the juice box on the side over here. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of different uh, uh, little things. So, apparently this is a pretty uh, a good uh, inverter. And uh, you can uh, change the charger value of that little uh, pot there. And uh, those are the type of batteries. And I got it for uh, the lithium phosphorus, uh, ph phosphate uh, batteries, LiPo 4. So it'll charge those nicely and I'll be able to control the rate. Uh, these are the bus bars that are going to it. The batteries are going to be feeding there and I got contactors. And uh, what happens is the uh, chargery uh, has, a real, uh, has an output for charging and discharge. So the way I did it was I went to these relays and each relay here is for um, discharge and charge. And so any one of those trips, it'll trip that otherwise I would have had to use two of these contactors probably in series and uh, to cut the voltage and uh, what I like about these relays is that uh, there's a light and it'll indicate um, what is uh, uh, disconnecting and uh, they only pull a few uh, hundred milliamps a piece if that so it'll be pretty efficient so I'll show you how this turns on as soon as I hit this button over here that will come on and that was uh, battery number two we'll turn on number one and or number three and then number four and you heard the contactors click and that will provide uh, power the little lights will indicate uh, which might might have disconnected it so and we got the screens here show the uh, batteries I'll be hooking up the um, uh, what they call those uh, um, the shunts uh, to do current measurements I got the wires over here and uh, yeah I'll be finishing wiring up and I'll show you guys and then we can do some testing see you in a bit well I got everything wired up now and tested uh, we actually were able to uh, put some um, about five kilowatts of power into uh, the Nissan Leaf there so I got a pretty good charge and uh, chargers coming up now and that beeping you hear is uh, going out of balance so they're almost charged up now and you'll see I set the uh, threshold for 100 millivolts and it'll put some amperage in there and it'll balance out and the charger will kick in that's uh, down to 119 and this one's a 136 so they're topping off and they're balancing out uh, slowly and uh, when one kicks in you'll see that the relays go off and then sets off the contactor so one just came back on 
That one's up to 37, 48 amps. And no charge there, and then we'll see that relay kick off, and it disconnects it. Uh, this charger is working good. This is a Signeer. I, it seems to be the same exact model as the uh, Ames unit, and so far it's uh, worked very well. Got a little display here. Doesn't have that much information, but it's a remote uh, turn-on panel. I'll See if I'll keep it there. The wiring's just temporary right now, just to get it up and working and tested. I got an input and an output, so that thing is working as a charger. Uh, those are all my terminals, and this is a charger that I'll be using in case of power outages. I run a generator, a 2000 watt inverter generator outside, hook that charger up, and batteries will be like a big buffer. And uh, over here, you'll probably see another little project of mine um, 12 volt battery using those 200 amp uh, round cells I forgot what they call them but um, that was the first project and then I got these from battery hookup not too long ago and uh, waiting for a hole puncher uh, thank you David Paz for uh, looking at that and uh, determining that punching holes and it were going to be the best idea because I would have tried to solder it and uh, we'll see, I'd, this might be an add-on to this, or, an, uh, or I might make another separate project on that. But it's amazing, that's about 3 kilowatts of battery. Then for the weight, um, it's very, very nice. They're pouch cells. Uh, you don't want to puncture these. Uh, you'd have a bad day if that happened. So they have to be well protected. Unlike these, which the chemistry of the LiPo-4 um, lithium iron phosphate is pretty, pretty uh, stable uh, and uh, doesn't catch fire or anything like that so I'll shortly I'll be uh, capacity testing these and uh, seeing what kind of capacity I can get with the uh, balancers on uh, I also have uh, 300 amp fuses here on the uh, uh, positives right at the battery it's a uh, best place for them and then later on I'll um, insulate those to uh, protect them against anyone accidentally coming up and I use the uh, uh, protection covers that the batteries came with and use them for that portion of the battery. Well, one's kicking on and uh, you can see uh, it's, uh, it's this one now. You'll see the little red light there and that tells me uh, something's going on. We'll look at the uh, battery. The highest one is 3.3 and 3.251. And there, and then you see our difference is uh, 194. And number eight there seems pretty high, 3.57 compared to the rest. So the balancers are doing their job, and um, this will be a slow process, but they will balance out and charge up. One thing I have to figure out here is how to reset the capacities. It's showing 91%. This one's showing 100%. And up there is 89%. So I don't know if that eventually fixes itself. I'll have to dig that up in the manual and see what it says about that. Well, that's all for now. Uh, we'll do some capacity tests later on and uh, show you some of my other projects uh, as they get going. And uh, I'll be watching... Uh, all the YouTube videos and seeing if I can get any ideas and if you guys have any questions just uh, uh, leave it on the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. Take care.